Well, hello YouTube, and it's been a while, been kind of busy, got a bunch of videos made and huh, nothing posted. Sorry about that. Anyway, we got a package. This one should be nice for anybody that is into vintage test equipment. Well, provided if this is what I think it is, should be. It's a bit smaller than I was expecting, anyway. Um, it's it's in another envelope. Nice. Up. Oh, nope. It's it's what I thought it is. And if um, if any of you know, if you've seen any of my other videos of my workbench, I have. Pretty much on my workbench is entirely Hickok equipment, and um, which is perfectly fine for what I do because what I work on is vintage electronics and um, old radios and televisions and stuff like that. And um, that sort of equipment was pretty much built to work with that sort of equipment. But anyway, here's something a bit more modern. Hickok, the value innovator. Well, okay, so that's not, um, probably was not their slogan in the 50s, but this is an LX303 digital multimeter. Made in USA, this box is not made for shipping purposes. Let's see. What it says, one 9 volt transistor battery required. Accessories available, Ada uh, 115 volt AC adapter, deluxe padded vinyl carrying case, times 10 DC probe, 40 kilovolt DC probe, and a 10 amp current shunt. Alright, so let's open this thing up. Now this has some issues. I actually picked this up for 15 bucks on eBay. And... It comes in a plastic box. Well, actually, I, I don't think it comes in plastic box. I think the meter is the plastic box. So we've got the owner's manual. And we have the accessory order form. Is there a date on any of this? I want to see if there's a date. Well, it's got not too old, it's got Visa and MasterCard on it. Uh, it's got a current um, zip code. And limited warranty. I believe this is from the late 70s or early 80s. It's nice, it's got a schematic in here. So what? whatever do you buy today that comes with a schematic? Um, Parts, um, parts list. And it's a very, very simple. And there's our accessories. Nothing I can see with a date. Specifications under one year. Plus minus 0.9%, so not terribly accurate. Definitely isn't a fluke, but hey, it's a nice little neat little portable portable multimeter. Top cover retaining post, battery test. So I guess to test your battery, you um, just take your probe and you stick it in the hole. From what it looks like, uh, model number LX303, serial number 663-4600. Okay, so how do we open it? Oh, right here. Okay, and the clock is done. So, here we go. And apparently we've got some LCD issues. The selector switch actually feels quite nice off. So I'm wondering if this isn't, oh, 
one there's no battery in it eh, gonna have to find a battery crap well okay so let's find a battery and see how this what this does because this is actually in much better condition than any of the other ones I've seen on the inner on eBay that have sold for much more like the ones that I've seen have um, they've had the selector switch missing and um, they were beat this is like in mint condition aside from the LCD here and I'm not sure what's up with that because on the eBay auction it shows there was a blob in the center of the display so I don't know if that's the liquid crystal that's happened something we're gonna have to take it apart that's all there is to it we're gonna have to take it apart screwdriver time forget about putting a battery in it first I want to see what's up with this display first. And they're actually threaded machine screws so that's actually got inserts in here which is somewhat oh and the whole thing just pops right out not much to it to be honest and yes that battery test battery test 4.5 volt just goes to this pad on the the PCB here nothing not much to it there's our display we've got um, looks like some capacitors on the back here that's kind of not well routed there here's our um, DC input jack and our slide selector switch our range switch which is um, kind of nice in of the fact that it's not riding straight on the circuit board um, like some of them do the terminal connections are quite nice on here okay well so I had to take it back apart again because I forgot to line the switch up with the slider uh, but anyway a couple notes to detail here here's the AC input jack it's a standard threaded jack but they've got this little plastic collar over it to align it with the case which is neat um, and the way they routed the battery wires through here is kind of dodgy I mean they couldn't have possibly ran another trace or something around the edge and had the connections coming out on the side or something but they did route it through the LCD panel as kind of retainer so that's kind of good I guess uh, but under the LCD is the main chip of it which is not going to focus hold on it is an intersil ICL7106CPL and um, looks like it was made 43rd week of 1979 so that would date this multimeter at 1979 which um, I have to say that that is not that bad really I mean, it's very very basic one thing I'm not too thrilled about is there's no fuses anywhere on this thing so if it pops it pops and this does have I believe well it only goes up to milliamps 
doesn't have an actual amp but if you go over that 100 milliamp something's probably going to fry and I don't think I would trust it at a thousand volts either maybe with a high voltage probe but I wouldn't go over maybe 50 volts or something with this thing maybe measuring line voltage with it but yeah and I don't know this lens on here seems a bit odd to me like it looks almost like I put my finger under it I don't know if it's just my imagination it almost looks like it has a slight magnification to it shouldn't it's not it's just a piece of plastic but oh well let's get this thing back together and find a battery all right, so I've got a battery in and got a couple leads hooked up to it, and uh, let's see what happens. Um, let's see, volts, milliamps off, and ohms is a separate uh, selector, so let's try volts first. And that well, takes a while to zero out there, but it does work picking up so are we on okay we're in DC volts so DC volts oh times 100 millivolts 1 volt 10 volts and it's interesting that the decimal point does not change when you switch the range switch so let's try hooking it up to a battery here and see what happens point one five nine oh okay so that actually is the scale this is actually the multiplier of the readout. The readout apparently doesn't change. Um, like we put it on 100 volt. Hard to hold the battery and test it. We're getting point one five point zero one five one hundredths when and you multiply the readout by a hundred volts which would give us one point five volt we switch to ten volts we're getting point one five volts times ten volts is one point five times ten is one point five volt we switch it to one volt resolution And we're showing, now we're showing 1.6 volts. If I could actually get the thing to stay on the battery. Right, 1.603, 10 volts. 1.59 what happens when we switch it to 100 it's just showing one okay so the display works but I'm not sure what this I wonder if that isn't the um, something delaminated with the um, Oh, the word just popped out of my head. The um, polarizing screen on it. 
Okay, so let's see what happens in ohms. Where is our ohms? Times 10. So this doesn't really have a... That would be what you would use for um, continuity testing or diode testing, but we don't have a... There's no buzzer in it. You can see how slow that reacts. Wow. Anyway, it's a neat little little gizmo there, and you can see I have the the back cover on here. And I'd assume there's there'd be a pair of um, cheapy leads in there. Yeah, it's the great cell battery. Anyway, there we go. The Hickok LX303 digital multimeter. Nice little compact case there. Anyway, there we go. And thanks for watching.